Good evening and welcome to Spartan Stadium for tonight's regional quarterfinal matchup between the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays and the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mag and Scott. We're in line for what could be an excellent game tonight against two teams that are very, very familiar with one another. Absolutely, they, they uh, know each other, they play each other in uh, multiple sports. Uh, they're both uh, schools of, of Catholic schools that they, they know each other a lot and they compete for kind of the same athletes maybe. Yeah, it should be a great game. Postseason adds an extra element to it. Let's take a look at tonight's keys of the game for both teams. Keys of the game one is uh, control the line of scrimmage. When you get this far, obviously, you've got to control the line of scrimmage, right, to dictate to what you want to do. Second is uh, Delphi St. John's offense. I think offensively, Delphi has to be on the field the majority of the time due to probably if you look at the rosters, LCC has probably the better athletes and the better skilled position. And what better way to keep them on the sideline is to keep your offense, you know, three yards and a cloud of dust, kind of like the old Woody Hayes. If you're controlling the offense, you're keeping those athletes on the sidelines. And you don't have to worry about it. And what goes? And the third key I have on that is tackling. Right, so you have to be able to tackle in space, especially when those athletes, when LCC wants to get their athletes out in space, they you have to be able to tackle and get them down. Same thing for LCC, they have to be able to get the St. John's runners and pass catchers down to the ground so they don't get up to pick up the first down. We have reached the second week of postseason play. It is an absolutely gorgeous night here at Spartan Stadium. Couldn't ask for better weather. Second week in November, weather hasn't gotten a memo yet, and we'll take it. When we return, we'll have the kickoff right here on WOSN. head coach Todd Schulte and the Lima Central Catholic Thunderbirds led by head coach Scott Palti. The LCC T-Birds are going to take the opening kick. St. John's ready to kick it away. Back deep. Matthew Quatman. As this one is going to go out the back of the end zone. Yep. Good decision that he uh, let that one go because uh, now you get to start at the 20-yard uh, line. Why chance it? So LCC will be led by junior quarterback Carson Parker. He has had a phenomenal year. When you look at his rushing totals, he can get it done on his feet. Over 1,300 yards rushing on the season. He can also get it done through the air. So you kind of have to pick your poison. Over 1,500 yards passing uh, for Carson on the season. So when you think you might be able to bottle him up in the run, he's able to air it out as well. Yeah, and he's had a couple of his receivers that were injured this year as well. So he's kind of been the do-everything quarterback. Hand off to start the game up the middle by Sierra. Gabe Sierra with the carry, a short gain on first down. Good job by the linebackers coming up and filling that hole. Like I mentioned earlier, in the, we started the broadcast. You can kind of see the replay play here. He kind of shed the blocker, came in there and made that tackle. They're battle-tested. Uh, the Blue Jays in that league, it's you, you. You don't have any easy game week to week, and and uh, they have, they understand their keys because they have to play good disciplined football to to compete in that league. Parker in the shotgun, waiting for it on second and eight. Going to take the snap. Going to look to run off to the right side. Has a little bit of a hole. Has some space. He gets tripped up right around the 31 yard line. Good enough for a first down, and that will be. The first first down of the night for the Thunderbirds. You see Carson Parker working through. And nice blocking by the T-Birds on that one. Yeah, James Patton up out there in front. Um, the junior, 5'10", junior, doing a good job from his guard position, pulling guard, going to design quarterback run there, get, getting out and clearing the way for his quarterback. And that's our first Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down of the night. Parker meets for the shotgun on first down. Going to keep it himself one more time. This side he's going to try the other side, but a nice pursuit by the Blue Jays as he stopped for a loss. Yeah, great great read by Druckenmiller there from his defensive end position. Shedded the blockers you can see here from this replay. He's out there and uh, got rid of the defender and went and ran down the quarterback. Good job from his left defensive end to make the tackle on the right side. Good no, uh, Good motor for that young man to not give up on the play. Second and 12 for the Thunderbirds. Matthew Quabbin in motion is going to take the jet sweep. Nice job getting out of trouble, but he's yeah. going to be tracked down by a couple of Blue Jays. 
Drucken Miller almost got another one there. He uh, won up the line of scrimmage, and uh, Quantman <laughs> used his speed to get away from him because he's coming up the field. as a tough block there. Uh, Lauk having a hard time controlling him. He went right by him. Good speed, good get off by Ethan Drucken Miller. Saw Braylon Metzger come in at the end and eventually get the tackle for St. John's. Third and long for the Thunderbirds. See what they draw up here. They're this type of the offense, though. It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to pass here. They can run as well. But Carson looks to move out of the pocket. Eyes downfield. He's going to throw it deep. Has the receiver. He's got to come back for it. Almost yeah. picked off. Nice job that time as Gabe Ciro was able to turn into a defensive back and get a hand in there and knock that one down and away from Nolan Swinnon. Yeah, good job. You're, you're exactly right. Sierra got uh, in there and became the defensive back on that play. What also makes Carson Parker so dangerous is he can he can run, he can pass. Just I mean, you got to come up and honor him. If you don't honor him, he's going to take off and go running. But uh, so he kind of draws guys to him that allows him to throw it deep. Carson also the punter for the Thunderbirds sends this one away, and it is going to bounce and be down right at. The 40-yard line, it looked like, as it kind of took a, a weird hop that time and was down by the Thunderbirds. So that's going to bring the Blue Jays out for their first possession of the night. Delphi St. John's riding the hot hand right now. You know, you mentioned the juggernaut that is the MAC conference and what they have to play and kind of the grinder that is that conference. And, you know, when you look at the record of St. John's, you know, some might – not think you know that strong of a team but when they are playing the level of competition that they are the record is deceiving you know coming in a week 10 outside the top 16 got the big victory against new bremen jumped up to 12th seed able to win big last week as well in the first round of the playoffs so you know they want to get off to a quick start tonight but great pursuit yes. by the thunderbird defense that time to stop them for a loss great job the defensive line to get penetration to allow that one to get have to push that one outside as the two defensive linemen got in there. So second and long coming for the Blue Jays. That's kind of what Delphus does not want to do. They don't want to play behind the sticks. They want to get positive yardage on first down because uh, LCC, if they know what's coming, they're going to pin their ears back. And with their speed and athleticism uh, makes – St. John's way predictable. Good cutback. All with the handoff right up the middle. is going to be about a five-yard gain on second down to bring up third and nine. Good job by Alm to see that, to cut back and, and to get in there. Because as you can see, it was kind of getting strung out here by the T-Birds, and he makes a sharp cutback. And it was a great play by number 22, Matt Sierra, to come there and make that tackle. Because I think he might, might had some green fake grass in front of him. Now Grant Holm back in the shotgun himself, coming off an injury. Kind of still rounding out into form, looks to throw. A throw on the out. This one gets tipped, almost picked off by the Thunderbirds. It seemed like maybe it might have been a little bit of miscommunication on that route, and that's going to be a three and out for Delphi St. John's. Good job by Carson Parker. He almost got that with a one-handed. He almost did a Odell Beckham there with his one hand. Almost came out and tried to get it. Look there. Looking yeah. at our Charles River replay, it almost seemed like the two Thunderbird defenders had better opportunity yeah. of catching that ball than the receiver. Yep, I would agree with you. So now St. John's with their first punt of the night. Gets this one away. And angling towards the sideline. It's going to bounce, and it's going to go out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. The official's going to run up and mark it down at the 24-yard line. So now LCC, not much going outside of that first down on their first possession. Obviously want to see if they can't get things going a little bit more, but they, they lean on that run game. They want the run game to dictate pace, and that opens up the rest of that offense. So I wouldn't be surprised to see them you know, try to pound it here and just try to see if St. John's can stop them. Yeah. Or try to, you know, on the jet sweep, get one of those athletes or coming off a jet sweep outside in space to outrun some of the Jeffersons to the corner or – St. John's, excuse me, run the St. John's guys, beat them to the corner and make them run with them down the field. Now it's going to be 
Carson Parker one more time working his way back up through the middle of that defense from St. John's. He's eventually taken down after about a gain of three. Good job by Schrader to get in there and make that tackle. This is very, you know, what I'm impressed is this, the Blue Jays very, very intelligent that they didn't even, I didn't see a single one of those guys go with the fake on the jet sweep. They stayed right on Parker, so that might be something to keep an eye on to see if the LCC T-Bird coaching staff will actually hand that one off and right on cue. This handoff is off to Cutlip. Wow, what a he tackle. Came, the Blue Jay defender did a nice job of shedding his block coming from Matthew Qualman. Get in there, nice hit for a no game, bring up third and long. Yeah, ditto from his cornerback position there. He was getting blocked and he just basically fired right through there and what a great tackle that was by Ditto because the pursuit was coming. It was behind him. He had a lot of opening there. It's one of those tackles where you almost want to yes. take video to show. That's how Absolutely. You, you come in, no hesitation, shoulders right on the hips. Took great right tackle. Down. Yeah, it was a great tackle. Couldn't coach it any better than that one. Parker's going to roll out, looking to air it out. Oh, he's got going to throw it deep. Wide open. It's oh. Cutlip. Oh. Just under through him. Is. Yep. Parker was feeling pressure on the back side. Cutlip had come wide open down the field on a blown coverage by the Blue Jays. Fortunate for the Blue Jays, that one didn't quite make yeah, it. Yeah, if you watch right here, well, I don't know if you can see it, but Metzger comes in. They both number three and number 15, both one on the out pattern and left Quatman wide open there. Or no, Cutlip, excuse me, was open. They just didn't go with him if Parker could have set his feet. I think might have slipped out of his hand a little bit there too. That was a six for sure. Carson Parker, 6'2", 207, big, strong kid, but that is a difficult throw, running to your right, throwing yeah. across your body, and he still was able to get it about 35, 40 yards downfield. As this punt is going to roll out of bounds at the 40-yard line, that's where Delphi St. John's will come back out and try to see if they can't get things going offensively. 6.45 left to go here in the first quarter. We're still tied at zero, four seed LCC Thunderbirds and the 12 seed at Delphus St. John's Blue Jays, the Holy War postseason edition. Yeah. It's easy when you have uh, play during the season, they can keep them posters and post them up again. Two for one special on them. So here's Grant Alm. We mentioned he's rounding himself back into form, had an injury early in the season, missed the uh, majority of the year, but is able to been. Uh, back the last, I believe, four weeks playing as we see a look like a short gain, but continued driving, driving, driving. Great effort on the play to get another two yards out of that. That's going to bring up second and six. Great job up the middle stuff and bounce it outside to get outside. We get some positive yardage. You know, Nate, you look at this and you got all these teams that run this spread, 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 but both teams really are running teams, right? They just want to spread you out. Uh, they use the pass, kind of the formation of the pass to set up the run as they make a pass there, but they predominantly want to run the football, but they want to spread you out, right? Don't want everybody leaning on that run. You saw all that time looking for his intended receiver, Nolan Schwinnen, not able to connect. And I think that, too, a little bit of the throwing coming from Alm is kind of that just getting used to having the ball back into his hands after having a cast on it for most of the season as he's going to look to use his feet this time, almost be able to pick up that first down. So decision time for the St. John's here early on as they come up with fourth, and I believe it's going to be one yard to go. Yeah. Right around midfield. And it looks like yeah, they are going to go ahead and punt this one away. Yeah, it might be a little bit too early to, you know, get the momentum. And, oh. and no, we're going to come back into kind formation. Of little, looks like a little wildcat formation here. Let's see, maybe they're trying to see if they can't maybe get draw them off sides off, yeah. as Swinnon back in the shotgun. Still like five seconds left on the play clock. Probably call timeout here. And that's going to bring in a delay of game. So now St. John's will, in fact, punt this one away to the Thunderbirds. 
kind of one to see. I'm sure that's a good job by uh, Coach Schulte. He's probably looking and kind of seeing what they, how they're going to play that, maybe kind of putting something back in his mind because in case maybe it's the fourth quarter and they need one yard to see how LCC lines up against that formation because uh, that might be something to go to. Worth a gamble trying to get them to jump off sides as well. Able to get the punt away cleanly. This one's angling to the sidelines wow. as of the first one, but this one looked wow. like it was going to take a St. John's bounce as they were hustling to get back to that one, but just ran out of room. But great hustle by Drew Boggs to try to down that one inside the five-yard line. It's going to go into the end zone, and it's going to be a touchback for the Thunderbirds. Yeah, what a great punt that you know, went up high and it hit and got a, a Blue Jay roll in and rolled into the end zone. So, so far, a defensive stalemate between these two teams with 4.48 left to go in the first quarter. We've seen LCC look like they were going to have some success, a couple of missed cues as they weren't able to connect on a deep pass downfield their last time out. Yep. It kind of, I don't know if it's a little bit of nerves or if it's just trying to, these two two teams, equal equally talented teams that are trying to fill each other out here. Parker with the quick pass out to Matthew Quatman. It's going to be complete. We're going to be down around the 25-yard line to bring up second and five. Yeah, I think that was a great call by the T-Bird coaching staff. If you look here, look, look at Parker. Got his feet set, two-step drop, boom, got rid of it, right, just to try to see him get some confidence of completing some passes. He's thrown a few uh, marginal passes, but that one, he, he what a great spiral, put it right on the numbers. You know, what a great play call. Again, you get yourself five, six yards but also gets the quarterback seeing himself complete a pass and, and work on some confidence. And up up the middle to Sierra. Sierra going to fight for some yardage. And this one's going to be out to the 35-yard line for at least famous recipe chicken first down. Yeah. That time they kind of faked. It looks like we have an injured Blue Jay down. Yeah. Take a look at the Charles River replay. They faked a jet sweep and run Sierra up, up right behind it. What a great play design there. And... Uh, that's like three options. You know, Parker could have probably pulled that one back out and went the other way. So I'm sure it's a, it's a different run. You know, they call them run pass option, RPOs, but it might be a run, run, run option for him. And Gabe Sierra, the second leading rusher on this Thunderbird team. He has 960 yards on the ground coming into tonight. Parker going to keep this one himself. Tries to work off that left side, but he is met by a couple of uh, St. John's Blue Jays, namely Joel Schrader, and that's going to be stopped for a loss. And I did a good job of standing up his uh, offensive lineman and making Parker kind of make the read off of him. He just kind of stoned and stayed his spot and allow his friends to come and clean up a little bit. Second and long for LCC. Substitutions running in and out, LCC. Not going not gonna to see a lot of huddles tonight. I like to stay out in that formation, get the calls from the sideline, everybody with the wristbands, so everybody gets on the same page. Five wide receivers, Carson all alone in the backfield. He's going to throw another quick slant. This one's off the hands of number 14, Billy Burke. Billy Burke. We were talking about injuries. Billy Burke, one of those players early in the season, coming back, I believe it was a um, collarbone injury that he had to work his way back from, but... He's had a good season so far. Not able to bring that one in, though. But you're, 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 if you're an LCC fan, that was a good pass by Park. He put it right on his hands. Just didn't get his head turned around quick enough to spot the football to get it. But great play design right on the money. Put that away for see if they run that one again later on. Here's Parker going to roll out. Look to throw it one more time. He's in pursuit. Going to have to get away. Just throws this one downfield along the sidelines and out of bounds. As when they've tried to get Carson out of the pocket, getting him running, the St. John's Blue Jays have been right on it and able to put a lot of pressure on him so he hasn't been able to set his feet or get very accurate throws on him. And most of that pressure is coming by number eight, Ethan Drunk Drunkenmiller, and also uh, Schwinneman Schwinnem is coming in there and getting pressure. So I think uh, they learned a lot from that first uh, meeting that he's not going to beat us tonight. They're, uh, they're sending two or three guys, and they're going to make someone else beat him. It's going to bring up another fourth down for the Thunderbirds. Parker back for the punt. Official timeout. Not sure if we have blood 
That's what it looks like as he came in, pointed down at the shin. Is yeah, looks know. like Mylon. Yeah, Mylon Cowens has to come out. As looks like they're gonna try to get him cleaned up real quick so he can get back out into the game. Mylon brings a lot of speed to this Thunderbird, especially on special teams. A lot of speed, and he's not happy about having to come out either. High punt from Parker, not very deep. Going to bounce down, though. No one touches it, so the Thunderbirds get a nice roll that time. It's going to be down right around the 36-yard line of the Blue Jays. Ganeer tried to come in there. Connor Ganeer tried to come in there and, and, and catch that, but there was three. He had to weave himself around three T-Birds to get to it, and he was unable to get it. Good, good athletic move for him to jump out of the way so he didn't get hit on that, on that punt. Almost as identical starting position as they had before. All with the hard count. Going to pull back out and take a look at the sidelines. Yeah, this uh, first quarter has been played between the 30s, it seems like. All I'm going to hand this one up off the middle. Nice hole by the up line up there. They Nice. Even I could have ran through that one. That was a heck of a blocking by the line guys up front. Looks like about it. Gain of seven on the carry. You can see how they pushed him away and he ran right through there. And, and then he carried guys for a couple yards. Good job. Yeah. Good. A six yard carry officially on that first down. So second and four for the Blue Jays. Hey, Nate, I just want to clarify things. I could have ran through that, but not necessarily got that <laughs> far, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Blue what a Jays great play. looking for a quick pass, but coming yeah. right up, almost untouched. Number 22, Matt Sierra with the sack. A big loss for the Blue Jays is going to push him back behind the sticks, it looks like. If that was a design uh, blitz there, but he kind of came sh right off the bat as soon as it was snapped, and he just fired right through the middle. And just when it looked like St. John's may be picking yep. up their first first down of the night. LCC comes up with a big defensive play to make it third and long. All oh, back in the shotgun. Going to go back looking to throw. Going to go deep. Has it passed. This one's off the hands of his intended receiver. Looks like that was number 18, Braden Pullman, not able to gather that one in. And he took a shot from Parker, too. A clip, not mind you, it was a clean shot as you look at here. It was a good throw by Alm to get it, and he put it in a spot where he had to do where he could catch it. Unfortunately, I don't know if we're going to see, but Parker came in and made sure that he did not catch it. Good legal hit. Mylon Cowan back in the game. Must have got all cleaned up. Back waiting for the punt along with Matthew Quatman. High punt. Going to be to Mylon. Mylon going to work to the right. Avoids the first defender. And just has his leg yes. held on to his St. John's. Fortunate to bottle him up as Cowan looked like he was only one step away from taking that one a long way. I would agree with you on that one. So first and ten for LCC as they come back out. Kind of hitting hit and miss on the offense as you take a look. Milan does a nice job moving around that time. Looked like number 63 came in. Josh Mueller just holding on, what, trying to see if he couldn't get a couple of teammates to help him with that tackle. Yeah, but give that man credit to hold on with one hand from a guy that's pretty fast and, and slippery that he held on to. His buddies came and helped him out. Parker right up the middle. Working through some traffic. Going to pick up about four or five yards on that carry. That one was just, uh, let's fire out and see how far down the field we can get, and I'm going to run right behind you. That was a great job. You know, that. look at the offensive linemen. They're not even in the picture because they're so far down the field. So maybe that was a point of emphasis when they're on the sidelines that we got to fire off and, and, get, and get that line of scrimmage that we talked about in the pregame. Parker back in the shotgun. Going to hand this one off to Sierra. Sierra going to work off the right side. And he gets tackled from behind by number 50, Camden Schaefer. But that is going to be enough for a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Yep. Good job. So 
So under 20 seconds left to go here, LCC. I would think would probably just go ahead and let this one clock out, but maybe not. They may try to get one more in here before the quarter ends. Parker takes the snap. Going to keep it himself off that left side. Through a tackle. Good job. Make it Spins two. out of one more. Nice effort by Carson Parker to pick up the extra yardage. A gain of seven on first down, and that is going to bring the first quarter to a close. After one, it's been all about the defense. 0-0 here at Spartan Stadium. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to 70 Seconds. I'm Terry's tonight's scoreboard sponsor. We want to wish the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. Second quarter just about underway here at Spartan Stadium. All tied at zero at Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mag. And Scott, it's been a heck of a first uh, quarter of play. Both these defenses really dug in. We've seen um, LCC get a little bit going offensively, but St. John's has always been up to the challenge. We'll see if they can continue that here on second and short. Right, and usually their defense has stepped up too and, and uh, got stops to get the ball back for their offense. Parker's going to hand this one off to Sierra. Sierra, big hole up the middle, going to be brought down, but do has the flag on the play, going to have a false start. start yep. Looks like on the offense, so that one's going to come back. Unfortunately, uh, coaching staff for the T-Birds are arguing that. I think it's on a receiver, actually, that might have moved. Coach Pauly's not happy. Still arguing his place. <laughs> Disagrees with that one. So that's going to push the T-Birds back instead of second and four. Now looking, I believe it was second and four, and now it's going to be second and seven. So I'm not 100% sure <laughs> about the spot placement. I believe it would have been a five-yarder. Maybe they were up a little bit farther than uh, second and four. Either way, second down, Carson Parker. Going to take the snap, hand it off to Sierra. Sierra, big hole. Works back up towards the middle. And he is met by Joel Schrader. Still but the turning. pile keeps going. You see everybody going in, trying to keep the pile moving. And finally taken down at the 40-yard line. A great pickup by Gabe Sierra. That's going to be another least famous recipe chicken first down. Yeah, great, great desire, great hustle by that young man to keep his feet. Churning in a lot of help from his friends to come over there and push that pile. You check out the Charles River instant replay. Gabe Sierra, he's met. Joel Schrader was there and a host of other St. John's, but he just kept moving. It helps when you can kind of get turned and you can yep. push that pile with your back and a little bit of help from his teammates, able to pick up some extra yardage. Also helps when them big fellas come in and push the pile too. Parker uh -oh, on the double him. move. He's got him wide open. Is he able to connect oh, just, just out of reach? It's a great pass. I think uh, Billy Burke just kind of, on his first cut, he kind of just hesitated a little bit before he turned up, and therefore that's going to, if you watch here on the replay, uh, maybe not, we're not going to get it. But a little pump fake, and on his first turn, it's like an out and up. And he just hesitated just a smidge before he turned up. That's the difference of completing that. If he didn't hesitate, it's probably right in his hands. So big play missed by the T-Birds. Had a couple of opportunities, haven't been able to cash in yet tonight. Second and 10. Barker sends a man in motion. He's going to keep it himself, and we're going to have another flag, and this one's going to also start. be a false start by the Thunderbirds. So these are the things that head coaches that drive themselves crazy, yeah. finally get some rhythm going on offense and penalties, slow things down. And instead of you know, a couple of good-looking plays, now you're going back. It's going to be second and 15. And playing behind the change. So now that, that gives the defense the advantage here. In a tight game as we've had so far in that first quarter, it was uh, each team trading body blows. It's like you can't give the, the other opposing team the advantage here. Parker sends Cutlip in motion one more time. He's going to keep it himself. Stood in the pocket, but he's going to get flushed out. Going to let this one go deep. 
Got a receiver open. Oh, wow. It was a great pass yes, to was. Matthew Quatman between two St. John's defenders, but Quatman not able to hang on as he was going to the turf, and that one's going to fall incomplete. A heck of a pass and a heck of an effort that Quatman on became that well. But watch this. I think he threw that one off about his back foot. He's kind of being chased and just kind of, you know, that's a good 40 yard pass. Quatman almost makes the catch. Great effort by both young men. Yeah, this uh, Thunderbird team, a lot of big play potential. And you can see why right there. Third and long. Parker. Looking to throw one more time. Right across the middle, receiver open. And that's Billy Burke as he's going to pick up 25 yards on the pass and catch. And that's going to be another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Kind of looked like uh, the wide side of the field played a little bit of zone and the, the short side played man-to-man -man and the safety just didn't come down quick enough to get Quatman going across the middle. Big plays is what Billy Burke's been doing all season, averaging 17 and a half yards per catch. A little bit late start on the season, but he's made up for it with some big plays. Parker gonna go to the air. On the out route, connects one more time with Burke. This is another least famous recipe chicken first down. Good break, good pass, hit him right on the numbers. That was a nice little pitch and catch there. Kind of found something. They might like uh, Burke's matchup here, and they're going to him over and over. The heck of a throw right on the – that was right in his break. He turned, got his hands up, and then right on his hands. What a great throw. Great route, too. 9.55 left to go. LCC in the shadows of their end zone looking for the first scores. They are in the Pats, Donuts, and Cream red zone. Parker going to air it out one more time. Oh. Tries to feed it into a small window, not able to connect. He was looking for number 22, Matt Sear, on that pass. And Gainier almost stepped across and picked that one off. That, they had that one bottled up. There was like short, small windows to get that pass through there. Burke did the best job he could to try to get. So it's going to bring up second and goal from the nine-yard line. LCC trying to see if they can't get on the scoreboard first question if they don't punch it in here do you go four on four down I, I think you do Parker gonna keep it himself right up the middle had a hole gonna try to push the pile looks like he's gonna be drugged down in between the one and two yard line well, his hat, helmet comes off so I don't know is he gonna have to come out now this makes it a little different and we'll see Coach Palti might choose to take a timeout here so they can get him back on the yeah. field. Especially after that quarterback sneak gets seven of those nine needed yards. And that is exactly what Coach Palti is going to do. He's going to take a Metzger financial timeout. We'll step aside as well and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Red Zone sponsor is Pat's Donuts and Cream, proudly serving donuts, ice cream, pizza, subs, sandwiches, and much more with locations in Lima and Delphis. Dr. Hunter Brink at the eyesight of Lima and Delphus provide quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding area. Visit the eyesightoflima.com for more information, and thanks for being our Extra Point sponsor of the night. Carson Parker, close-up look that time. As you see Coach Palti calling in the play. And it looks like Carson may not be coming in for this down either, so he may have to still stay out. The timeout may not have gotten him back in. Coach Palti might have just wanted to take that time out to make sure that they had the right offensive play in. Well, not knowing that, to make sure, every, you know, the, the sub kind of came on late and you get surprised to come in to, to play quarterback. You kind of want to know, make sure he knows what quarter, what play he's going to run and what you want. Matthew Quatman back. He's going to take it off that right side and in for a Thunderbird touchdown. LCC with the first Leland Smith touchdown of the game. Go on top, six and to nothing. Behind the run of Matthew Quatman does a nice job working off that right side. Yeah, great job. You know, your uh, quarterback comes out, you might as well go to your running back and just uh, go wildcat and go right behind it, which they kind of had some success over there on that right side. They, they did that with the quarterback draw and got seven yards and uh, did about the same thing there. So Michael Tafflinger lines up the extra point. 
and it is good as Michael Tafflinger able to convert the eyesight of Lima and Delphi's extra point to put the LCC Thunderbirds on top, seven to nothing. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Tonight's touchdown sponsor is Leland Smith Insurance Insurance Services, your first call for all your insurance needs. Also like to thank our first down sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wampak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. LCC goes on a long drive. The offense finally got going. Carson Parker with some big completions and then Matthew Quatman punching it into the end zone after the two yard run. LCC on top, seven and nothing getting ready to kick off to the Blue Jays. Right, and, and they kind of use the pass to soften them up and then get the run behind it. So great, great job by the T-Birds. Oh, he's got an opening. Drunken Miller Good. works to the near side, trying to get an opening, but Mylon Cowan right there for the tackle. Excuse me, that's actually number nine, Connor Geiner, as he was able to look like he had a little bit of space that time, sure but as you said, got tripped up. And Delphi St. John's will come out and see if they can answer for the thun or answer the Thunderbird touchdown. Great job by Cowens to come close that gap because he had a nice gap, but Cowens came from nowhere to get him on the ground. It's Grant Alm one more time back in the shotgun, waiting on the snap. Still plenty of time on the, on the play clock, still over 10 seconds. Alm takes a snap, going to hand it off, run up the middle off the left side. Short gain for the Blue Jays. It's going to bring up second and eight. I think the Blue Jays, again, every every offensive snap, positive yardage is a good thing, right? Because then they can still get, you know, still majority of the playbook is still in hand, but you just can't play behind the change against this defense. They're too fast, too good, and then you're forced to throw, and then now you unleash these linebackers on the blitz. And Coach Ball, or Coach Solte, excuse me, talked about the importance of keeping their offense on the field, and you're going to be able to do that behind the, a strong right. run game. Yep. But all that time tackled, looks like for no gain, to bring up third and long for the Blue Jays. Great job by the uh, front four for the T-Birds to string that one out, and then the lineman comes and fills the spot down the, down the line, and two of them get him down to the ground. Great job by the front four for the T-Birds. Third and long for St. John's. Zalm looks to the sideline. Eight minutes left to go here in the first half. I'm going to air it out. Going to look to the far sideline. Oh, and he had a receiver in the opening, yes, but just didn't get enough on it. A little bit more elevation. That could have been a big play for the Blue Jays as he was trying to connect with Nathan Ditto, but. Great job one more time by the Thunderbird defense to get their hands on the ball in the air. Frank Hauser did a good job from his linebacker position, dropped into that zone, almost got himself a pick because I think Ditto was coming wide open, like you said. Great answer by the LCC defense to get that ball back to the offense that was clicking. Not what you want if you're a T-Bird, or if you're a Blue Jay fan right now. This punt is away. Mylon grabbed, or it looked like he tried to grab, yep. couldn't get his hands on it, but I think we're going to have catch interference. It looked like the St. John's defender was already trying to tackle, tackle. Cowan yep. before he ever had the ball. Yeah. It was a good decision by him to come up and try to take that because as we've witnessed this whole first quarter is uh, that ball hits and it takes usually a Blue Jay bounce. And that's awful close. As it almost looked like pretty good timing. Yeah as the officials are still talking about it. But they are going to call catch interference. That's a 15-yarder. And that's one of the ones where, you know, if Cowan is able to come up and get that one cleanly, there is nothing but green to the right side. And he yes. has a blazing speed. If he catches that one, it's probably a touchdown if he's able to catch that one in, uh, on the move like that. So. Even though you don't want the penalty, and it was awfully close, it might be one of those good penalties if your defense can stand tall here. Right, absolutely. And, you know, like you said, it's trying to make a play. It was really close, though. 
of actually being a good play. So Parker one more time trying to see if they can't build on their last offensive possession. Look to run, he's going to pull it back. Oh, Wide pass. open along the sideline. What a pass and catch. Matthew Quatman reaching out, snatching that one right on the shadow of the sideline. And Thunderbirds are on the move one more time. You talk about the catch, but how about the pass? That was on a rope right there to him. He just turned like a back shoulder fade, put it right on him. More of an out, I guess. Look, maybe in real time, look, he just kind of turned and it was right there to the outside. Carson Palmer, or Carson Palmer, excuse me, Carson Parker <laughs> finding his rhythm out there looking like Carson Palmer. Yeah, absolutely. Parker going to run off that right side, going to push the pile and gets touchdown, into the end zone yeah. for another Leland Smith touchdown for the Thunderbirds. Thunderbirds are kind of forcing their will here. The big guys up front are having their way on that line of scrimmage. So after a slow start in the first quarter, LCC has come here in the second quarter. The offense gets going. Carson Parker is able to find some success through the air, and they find themselves on top, 13-0. Michael Tafflinger waiting on the snap. Kick is up, and kick is good for another eyesight of Lima and Delphus extra point. LCC on top of Delta St. John's, 14 to nothing. We'll be right back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. I'd also like to thank our first down sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mag. And Scott, you know, we knew we were in for a battle. The defenses came to play in that first quarter, but here in the second, LCC's offense has really found their way. Yeah, and I think they've used that pass to soften up that defense, and now they, you know, they got them guessing, and it's been working well for them. Good kickoff return as Braylon Metzger able to work his way up. Ball will be down at the 25-yard line where St. John's will come out for their possession. You don't want to ever say this early, must scores offensive possessions, but if you yeah. don't score here, especially with the way that LCC has been working, you, you definitely want to start getting some rhythm on offense. You, you really don't feel like you can afford another three and out right here. Absolutely. You need you need some yardage. At least got to flip the field a little bit because uh, LCC has been kind of working on a short field a ma good majority of this second quarter. On with the snap. Uh -oh, with some way. miscommunication yeah. that time, and that's going to lead to a short loss or maybe no gain. Actually, looks like they may have actually picked up one on a busted play, so second and nine for the Blue Jays. Yeah, he had his back to the running back. The running back kind of went behind him. He turned right and it was maybe he was supposed to go left. Alm sends a man in motion. He's back oh. in the shotgun and we're gonna have a false start. So, yes. Get some miscommunication in that backfield. You know, we, we talked about Grant Allman. You know, this is, I believe, his fourth or fifth week back after that injury. He sustained early in the season. So, you know, I'm sure there's still some growing pains there, some things that they're, they're working out. And, you know, that communication piece can be cru crucial, especially in, in, in games like this. I think we saw a little bit of that right there. Yeah, and just didn't get the ball snapped in the right time because he had, he had the receiver kind of cutting up field and he had the running back moving at the same time and ball still in the center's hand ready to be snapped. All I'm able to get the snap off, gonna throw it out wide, but a little bit too much on that pass, gonna fall incomplete. Pass intended for Nathan Ditto. That might have been the same play, but they ran it to the other side that they were gonna run when they had the false start there. 6.32 left to go in the first half. LCC on top, 14 nothing as we see the Charles River instant replay. And all that time, just a little bit too strong on the pass. Yeah, one just kind of got out away from him, kind of let that one look like it. He just got under it too much and got it too high. 
getting drive on it. On with the handoff, Swinnon. Works right through, but the defensive line of LCC blew that one up and able to drop him for a loss. Yeah, I believe that was uh, num big number 55, uh, Russell. D'Angelo Russell made a nice move, cutting across his uh, offensive lineman's face and got in the backfield to make the stop. Also saw number 53, James Patton, in on the stop. As that whole line got involved that time. So we talked about them, uh, St. John's needed to avoid a three and out, but that's exactly what happens is they're going to have to pump this one away. You think LCC will have great field position as this punt very high but doesn't go very far. Kind of goes backwards. It takes a Thunderbird bounce and going to be down at LCC's 38-yard line. Yeah. This is crucial. You know, you said crucial back before the first down. This might be even more crucial here to get a defensive stop and get out and help your offense. They put another score in here, and it's going to be a tough sled in here for the Blue Jays coming back. LCC right now with a chance to take all the momentum as they are already on top, 14 to nothing. Carson Parker sends his running back out wide, going to keep it himself. Works right up the middle. Spins around, picks up a couple extra yardage. As he picks up about seven on the carry. Yeah, what, what's impressed me most about Carson Park, Parker and eight is how strong he is. Look at right here on this tackle. He had a guy there, and he drug him one, two, three more yards, and he still falls forward. So not many quarterbacks in the area can drag an offensive lineman with him for two or three yards. Yeah. Parker is not a kid that you can tackle high. If you go no. up high, you're not. You're going to go for a little bit of a ride. And you saw that time as um, Drunken Miller was trying to take him down, but a little bit too high, and he carried him. But here's Gabe Sierra with the carry. He's going to carry it right up to about the 30-yard line to bring up third and one. He's kind of like that little scat back that comes in there, man. Look at these moves. He's b balling like a pinball, just moving through there and jumping through that cut. Clock running here in the second quarter, 440 left to go. Still have plenty of time on the play clock, still 20. Looks like they wanted the big guy package because two bigger offensive linemen come in and two of the receivers ran out. So we'll see. I am guarantee it's Parker running. Yep. And St. John's also knew that play call, yeah. but a great push by the offensive line. And Carson is able to pick up a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Yeah. I'll tell you, they're controlling that line of scrimmage. Look at this push. You're three, four yards down the field and still driving those legs and pushing the Blue Jays back. So Blue Jays got to, sorry. No, I was just saying you saw Gabe Sierra on that replay yeah. come in and just blow up his assignment that time. Give Parker all sorts of room. Kind of go spread. We got those two big offensive linemen just came out and put in the two – Speedy receivers. Parker, he's going to air it out, looking for Quatman deep. Oh, what a catch. What concentration yeah, sure and catch was. by Matthew Quatman as he has another Leland Smith touchdown, his second of the game. Yeah. Drew Boggs was trying to get in. He knew he was beat, and he was just kind of waving his hands a little bit here, as you can see on this replay. He knew the ball was coming, and he just trying to distract the receiver, but Quatman – what great concentration to come away with that. And actually, it, it was good defense. He, yeah. he saw that Quatman's eyes had changed. He did what DBs are supposed to do, hands up, not wanting to draw the contact, don't, don't want to get the uh, pass interference call. But Quatman with the concentration and the adjustment to come down for the touchdown as Tapplinger's kick is up. Oh, and this time, it is no good. So it will be a 20 to nothing. Delphi St. John's finds themselves trailing LCC as they come back, trying to see if they can't get some offense going before halftime. We'll be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium. Yosemite Cemetery tonight's scoreboard sponsor. We want to wish you the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. 
Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. Second quarter has belonged to the Thunderbirds as they have put 20 up on the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard. They find themselves on top 20 to nothing. St. John's trying to find an answer on offense, but haven't been able to get a whole lot going. Um, haven't been able to string really together any sort of right. sustained drive at this point either. Or, or any rhythm. You're right. It's just they just they just need something positive to happen here to get get them going. It's just been everything that was going their way the first quarter, at least defensively. Uh, they just can't catch a break the second quarter. Oh, looks to drop back, wants to throw it, has to scramble. Gets chased from behind and gets taken down after a short gain. Good pursuit by the line of LCC is yeah. all not able to get rid of that one. And good job by him to not look like the uh, defensive lineman was trying to swap that out of his hands, but good strength and effort for him to keep that away from him and not allow them. That would have been totally di disastrous if he had fumbled it there inside the 20-yard look. So Alm with two running backs in the backfield with him. Takes the snap, hands this one off. Swindon's going to fight for oh. some extra yardage. And we're going to have fumble. a fumble. And the first turnover of the game belongs to LCC, and they are going to get the ball back in excellent field position. Yeah, I, I didn't see who came in late. Got his hat right on the ball, knocked this one away. Maybe the replay will see. He's kind of tiptoeing around. He's kind of fighting, 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 and then somebody ripped it away. And and I believe that was Gabe Sierra. I think he Sarah. just came in and with that right hand yep. punched it as he saw Swindon kind of got stood up. Great play by Sierra. Now he'll come back out, join Parker in the backfield. Great smart play by uh, Sierra to get in there and knock that one out. Parker sends Sierra out wide. Going to air it out one more time, but it's going to have to run. Good As hustle. That pursuit from the Blue Jay defense comes up big, and you can see trying to get him fired up, yeah. Joel Schrader. He knows he's got to put some energy in this defense, and that's how you do it with big plays right there. Absolutely, and he came from his defensive end and ran down the quarterback, just ran right around the defensive line. No quitting that young man, knowing that he has got to come and make a play for his defense because they, they've been kind of shredded this quarter, and I think that he, he, what an answer by that young man. Saw on Charles River replay there. Parker fortunate not to fumble that yeah. one as they had the ball out. As Schrader came in to take a to tackle, try to get that ball free. It's going to bring up second and very long for the Thunderbirds. But we've seen they've been able to pick up chunk yardage quickly tonight, especially in the second quarter. But Parker not able to connect with Cutlip on that pass. Yeah, that one was a little low. I don't know if. Uh Parker thought he was going to come back to the ball, and Cutlip kind of just went and stopped, and therefore it hit off his, I think, ankles. Third and 17, 217 left to go in the first half. It's been all LCC here in this quarter as they are on top, 20 to nothing. Five wide receivers for the T-Birds. Parker takes the snap, going to carry it himself right up the middle, works off that right side, going to pick up. Maybe Ooh, about five yards as he got spun around, continued to try to pick up extra yardage. and That extra effort, which gets re rewarded so often, that time might have actually cost them a few yards as he found himself going backwards towards the end of that tackle. Kind of got spun around, and he just kept running and kept his feet moving. You're right, because he was way up there about the 22 or 25-yard line. You can see the St. John's defender at the end trying to <laughs> pull him back, get, maybe get a few of those yardage back. And on fourth and long, it looks like the Thunderbirds are, or at least we're thinking about maybe going for it here in their own territory with under two to go. I'm sure they're going to wait until this play clock gets down to one. And we've got Coach Paldy over here next to the uh, sideline official, and he's going to call timeout. Yep, right now, one second. Coach Balti takes another Metzger Financial timeout. We'll step aside as well and be right back on WOSN. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. 
Pat's Donuts and Cream is tonight's Red Zone sponsor, proudly serving donuts, ice cream, pizza, subs, sandwiches, and much more with locations in Lima and Delphus. Minute 23 left to go. LCC kind of in that in-between area where uh, punting it at this point doesn't gain you a whole lot. Might as well go ahead and see if you can't take a shot here on fourth down. Yeah, and your defense is playing really, really well, so why not? Deep shot, looking oh, yeah. for Quabman one more time. Oh, he got flags. Wow. But this time, not able to connect. Boggs, though, seemed to be pulling the jersey quite a bit. Yeah, they Did both, not want Quabman to get free. They both were jostling there. Both were smacking at each other's hands. And I don't know what the call here is. Take a look at the Charles River replay here, see if we can see. Saw some hand fighting. Yeah. Yep. And honestly, not a whole lot there, at least not late in that route. So, And they did call pass interference, so it'll be first automatic first down, 15 yards and automatic first down. Oh, what a what a, yeah, I think what a blow to that defense when they stepped up and got the sack when they needed it, playing behind the chains. And now Coach Paul takes another timeout. So this will be his third and final Metzger Services Financial Services uh, timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Tonight's extra points are sponsored by the Eyesight of Lima and Delphus. Dr. Underbrink at the Eyesight of Lima and Delphus provides quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. Visit the eyesightoflima.com for more information. So a pass interference call and a deep attempt to Matthew Quatman. I think you got to give that young man a lot of credit that time as Parker got a lot of air under it and a little bit of a sell job maybe to the officials afterwards yeah. and helped him out with that flag. All right. And that gives the LCC a better look at it. Didn't give him a first down, but going to be fourth and short now. Parker going to roll to his left, going to look to throw. Gets oh, it to Quatman. Wow. Oh, he tried to stop. It was a, we saw that pass play earlier tonight. Another great pass and catch. Quatman tried to put the brakes on before he went out of bounds, but momentum carried him. But either way, it's going to be another Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down for the yeah, T-Birds. He's been getting open at will here. I, he's running great routes and catching the ball. And Box tried to come just so close to making a play there, just out of his reach. So LCC one more time in the Pats Donuts and Cream red zone. They're looking at first and goal from, looks like the eight yard line. Parker, quick pass onto the out. Oh, what a tackle. A great pursuit that time as Frankenhauser not able to shake loose that time. Looked like that was gonna be set up real nice, but great job by the yep. St. John's defender. Looks like ditto coming through just kind of like he did earlier in that first quarter. He just, what a great tackle, head up. He said and goes right there, right through the runner and gets him on the ground. That's his second good tackle that he's had this game. Under 40 seconds left to go. Parker trying to see if he can't get the T-Birds one more score. He's going to float this one Ooh. to Quatman. Quatman tried to dive for it right through his hands. That's going to bring up third down. Good effort that time by Matthew Quatman as Parker was trying to lead him just a little bit too much on that one as he couldn't quite get around to it. Just to take a hair off that, that's another six. I like the throw, though. He put it in a spot where only his player could get it. 27 seconds left to go here in the first half. Let me ask Third you, and goal. Let me ask you this. Do you dare run it? I don't think so. But what do I know? There goes Carson <laughs> Parker, and he is in. <laughs> Carson Parker with another Leland Smith touchdown as LCC is rolling, and they're on top 26 to nothing. Yeah. It's kind of like uh, the whole middle. Everybody won out, and they kind of good job by the offensive line. Just kind of pushed him out of the way, and he makes – one cut back, you know, if uh, gets him down there at the five, that might have been tough to get another playoff by the time to get everybody back and lined up. But good job by Parker to put his foot in the ground and get past the defender. 
in my defense, it did not look like a design run. Yeah, I right, think that right. was a pass. I but agree. good decision by Parker that yes. time to carry it in as Michael Tafflinger's extra point is good. As he connects on another eyesight of Lima and Delphi's extra point. LCC on top, 27 to nothing. We'll step aside and be right back on WOSN. Welcome back to Seventy Cemeteries. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor. We want to wish the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. LCC finds themselves on top, twenty-seven to nothing. When we look at the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard, and that has all been done here in the second quarter. Right. After we we were talking off air, you know we are a lot of offense here for one quarter after what looked like was going to be a defensive battle after one. Sure did, and. You know, I don't know if, if you're St. John's, you try to you take a knee and just go back and make your adjustments at halftime, or do you try to take your shots with 17 seconds, you know, thinking that, hey, we're just trying to get something positive going on here. Braylon Metzger with a good return, though, so St. John's wants to take a couple of chances here, see if they can't shake one loose. They, one of the better starting positions that they've had after a kickoff getting out almost to the 35-yard line. I don't think they've ever been on the uh, T-Bird side of the field yet tonight. They've been close. They got to almost to the 50 once, but they have not reached to the other side. Got in LCC T-Bird territory. Looks like it's going to be a face max. That might get them in, into the territory or close to it. So we'll see if they... Looks like maybe personal foul. That is what we will have, 15-yard yeah, face, face mask penalty. So 10 seconds left to go, but St. John's getting some yardage. As you can see, kind of the head kind of gets trying to make a play and just got the helmet. So tough for a defensive lineman. You're reaching and trying to reach out and grab, and sometimes you just happen to grab the face mask. I'm obviously, wasn't done on purpose. Yeah, James Patton in there trying to cause some issues and just got his hand caught up there for a second, but that was enough for the flag. So Coach Schulte is going to take a timeout and talk about it. We'll step aside as well. Be right back on WOSN. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by Charles River in Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So Delphi St. John's trying to see if they can't get anything going here before going into halftime, trying to get a little bit of momentum going into the locker room, aided by a 15-yard face mask penalty, have the ball right around midfield. All right, just, to, just something to build on coming out. They'll have the ball starting in the third quarter, so just see if you can find something to build, build on for the next half. LCC sends quite a few guys deep. Is going to have the end around, and he's going to be pulled down, and he's going to be inbounds as well. So that will bring the first half to a close. LCC comes alive in the second quarter to take a 27-0 lead at halftime. We'll step aside and be back with second half action on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's touchdown sponsors, Leland Smith Insurance, Insurance Services. Your first call for all your insurance needs. Nate Garlock alongside Scott Mag, and Welcome back to Spartan Stadium. Second half action just about underway. LCC on top, 27 to nothing. And Scott, you know, we, we've mentioned it a couple of times, but that first quarter, defensive struggle, neither offense looking very good, both defenses being strong. But in that second quarter, Carson Parker really started coming alive, run game through the air, the whole offense just looked completely different. Yeah, absolutely. And like we mentioned on air, we talked about how they kind of complete, completed three or four or five passes, and then all of a sudden that run game opened up, and then then they had to honor the run, and then they went past. So they kept the Blue Jays on their toes. But, you know, Blue Jays just have to come out here this second half and just try to get something positive. Right, it's just been so long since they had anything positive that has happened for this game um, for them. They got to, you know, string a few first downs together. They got to keep their offense on the on the field longer than three plays and and get some yardage to to get their defense to rest. I know a lot of players are playing both ways, but they still need to get something positive because uh, 
the T-Birds are a <laughs> a fine, well-oiled machine there that second quarter. Delphi St. John's will receive the second half kickoff as we are underway. This one's going to go out of the back of the end zone and come out on a touchback. You got to think this first possession is going to go a long way to, to really determine how the second half will look for the Blue Jays. Right. And, and, and I'm sure they made their, their necessary adjustments and maybe changed the blocking schemes or whatever or trying to get some somebody loose on the outside. It's just I don't, you know, the, the – the faster athletes, you know, the holes are there. It's just that they get closed quicker with these guys coming. They're filling from their linebacker position. They're filling from their defensive back position, and they're just getting there quicker than the Blue Jays can get through the holes. Elphitz comes out, four wide receivers. All with his running back in the backfield. Going to take the snap, going to look to air it out. Quick pass out to the left is completed for nice gain on first down. Looks like Ditto out there. Nope, not Ditto. That's uh, Boggs. Yeah, I do like that pass, right? You just get one quick step, boom, get rid of it, come back to the ball and get five, six, seven yards here. Now you now you got all kinds of plays to go here. So second and short for St. John's. You know, if you're this offense, I, you know, I'm sure the message Coach Solti is trying to give to them is we're not going to get all back in one play. Let's take what the defense gives us, see if we can't make the most of it. Another quick pass out on the screen, but this time not going anywhere. Short gain, if any, for the Blue Jays. Yeah. Good job by Quatman. I mean, he just closed in her. If you look at this, it was set up well. He had blockers out in front of him. Quatman just runs around the block and goes and attacks the, the ball carrier and gets him to the ground. Third down and two as Delphi St. John's is trying to come out here in their opening possession of the second half, trying to put a drive together. Kind of scrap that spread and just want two two receivers with a kind of a hybrid tight end-ish. Good cutback. Good opening. First big play of the night for the Blue Jays. 30, 20, 10. And Delphus St. John's just like that, back on the scoreboard, and that's what this Blue Jay offense needed. They had to get a big play, and they did just that. Right, and they also had to get something positive. Right now, you flip the, you flip the field, right? You, you scored, you got all the momentum coming out of halftime. Great cut back here, and uh, followed his quarterback down there. Quarterback nice makes a nice block on Parker there, and a freeze number 13, Clay Paduti, to get himself a touchdown great run by that young man so delphi st john's with their first leland smith touchdown of the game That's a extra beauty. point is on the way and it is a good for the eyesight of lima and delphi's extra point delphi st john's able to get on the scoreboard here the first possession of the second half we'll step aside and be back on wosn Welcome back to Semi Cemeteries. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor. We want to wish the LCC Thunderbirds good luck in tonight's football game. Taking a look at the Gethsemane Cemetery scoreboard. LCC is on top, but Delphi St. John's, that offense was needed a big play, and that's got to be a big boost for the Blue Jays. Absolutely. And uh, I want to apologize for Claire, uh, Clay Padubny. I said his name wrong, so I apologize for that. But what a heck of a run. He made a great cutback, and then, you know, he's a one cut back, and he made a nice run and ran hard and got himself to the end zone. Gets the fans into it, gets the student section. Kickoff is on its way. Going to be fielded by Cowan. Cowan looking for some blocks, finds a hole. Gets the ball out to the 34-yard line. And it's going to be up to the Blue Jay defense to stand strong, as we saw in the first quarter. They really limited the T-Bird offense, so got to try to find their form again. Yep, and uh, see if they can get their athletes in space and, uh, and then run the ball with their quarterback. We'll see if that offensive touchdown fires up the defense here and they're Kind of this 3 4 set, and these linebackers really have to start filling some of these holes and get the quarterback down. So Carson Parker leads the Thunderbirds out on their first possession of the third quarter. 
Going to keep it himself. Goes to the left. Fights through a couple of tackles. Nice stiff arm as he's forced out of bounds. I think he got, might have got a face mask he was arguing about it, and I see the official coming in and talking about a face mask. See some extra yardage on the top of this one. So an 11-yard run and a 15-yard penalty on top of that. It's going to be a big chunk play for LCC, and that's also going to be a least famous recipe chicken first down. So we just talked about how important it was for the, yeah. the Blue Jay defense to come out and, and try to hold the Thunderbird offense that has really been rolling here since the second quarter. But yeah. on that first play, 11 yards on the ground, tack on the 15-yard penalty, and just like that, LCC is in Blue Jay territory. And they kind of love it. Here it is that same play again where they pull their two guards and they run the quarterback behind it. But great read by Mueller to come up there and, and get through those linebackers and get the quarterback down as you can see kind of weaves him away he's kind of got through there and didn't allow Parker to cut back on him as number 24 Mueller comes in and makes play Parker stopped for a one yard loss bring up second and 11 Parker back in the shotgun takes a snap rolls to his right going to look to throw Drops back, lets this one go, has a receiver deep. It's Billy Burke, catches it, and he walks into the end zone yeah. for another LCC touchdown yeah. as they get another Leland Smith touchdown on the board. Yeah, and I, I was going to – I kind of noticed that they had Burke. He was kind of single coverage at there, and he did a great job of, of on this route. He ran hard. He had single coverage. He did an out and up that they just missed on it in that second quarter, and he, he just – he came out of that break really hard and uh, Parker caught him in stride for a touchdown. Great great route, great pass, great execution by the T-Birds. So Michael Tafflinger in for the extra point. It's, uh, what an answer by the T-Birds. Kick is up and this one is good for another eyesight of Lima and Delphus extra point. So LCC able to answer the Blue Jay touchdown there on top, 34 to seven. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's Red Zone sponsors, Pat's Donuts and Cream, proudly serving donuts, ice cream, pizza, subs, sandwiches, and much more with locations in Lima and Delphus. So the Blue Jays come out, score quickly on a big play. LCC, they come out, they score quickly Big play to Billy Burke for the touchdown as they get back on top, 34 to seven, 9.30 left to go here in the third quarter as the kickoff is on its way. Here's Hands are nice, run moved run. off to that wide side. Gainer was able to make it up almost near midfield before he was pushed out. A great return for the Blue Jays as you know, this team, that, you know, we were talking prior to even coming onto the air, you know, you said this this team is not going to quit. They're going to have fight, and we see that. You know, they're down multiple scores, but you see the offense coming alive. Now here, special teams play. These guys are not going away. No, they're not, and, and they've, they've been in too many. They're battle-tested. They've been in games like this before where they have to keep fighting. Uh, otherwise, they're going to get embarrassed, and these guys, these guys don't take that kindly, so they're going to fight to the end. Hand off up the middle, bouncing off a couple of tacklers, finally taken down. About a 10-yard gain, and they're going to actually bring that back a yard. So a nine-yard gain on the carry, going to bring up second and short. But again, you notice you got a couple positive plays, but don't you notice it seems like they're a little more bouncing their step. They're running a little bit harder. Obviously, the, the special teams, you know, he took it and ran about 50 yards from, from the goal line. I mean, they're just... You could just see once something positive happened, this just started snowballing positive for the Blue Jays. Another completion out of bounds. Going to be a first down for the Blue Jays. That's a least famous recipe chicken first down. That's 8.39 left to go. Blue Jays trying to hurry up on offense. 
See Alm take the snap quickly. He's going to hand it off to Swinton up the middle. Swinton's going to be bottled up, though. Excuse me, I believe that might be Padubny. Yeah. Swinton was on the right side, not the left. So Nice job, though, as he was met by pretty much that entire all, uh, defensive line of LCC, but still able to pick up some positive yardage. Yeah, good hard running to get two yards there. Padubny uh, gets hit and then falls forward for an extra yard. Still fighting. Look at this. He's still turning his legs and still falls forward for that extra yard. No quit. Second and eight for the Blue Jays. Two receivers and two in the backfield along with Alm. Alm's going to take the snap. Looking to air it out. Rolls to his right. Looking for his receiver. Has to get rid of it out of bounds. Going to bring up third and long for the Blue Jays. Yeah. And Alm, he was kind of catch 22 there. He's going to run out of bounds because he had two defensive linemen chasing him or try to throw it where only his offensive receiver could get that. He ends up throwing it out of bounds. This might also be two down territory, down 27 with seven minutes to go. You're on uh, LCC side of the field, and that's kind of about where they start about the whole, whole game so far, about somewhere in between the 30 and 40s, 40 yard line. Alm's going to hand this one off. Swinning up the middle. Going through hard. three wow. different tacklers. Yeah. Going to be taken down short of the first down. It'll be fourth and two for Delphus. As St. John's with a nice power run that time up the middle. Yeah. And Swinning just, I mean, there was no cutting there. He <laughs> just knees a churning, just running hard right up the middle there. It's like, okay, try to get me down. I'm running hard. Scott, you hit it right on the nose. Two down territory. Hand off. Here's Podubny, working on the sight. outside. Great adjustment, uh, one more to beat. Carson Parker able to think force him out of bounds on that left side as there is a flag, yeah, they're gonna call hold, and holding it. for St. John's. So a nice run by Podubny that time. Looked like they were gonna be uh, successful on fourth down, but I think right there. Looked like maybe 57, as yeah. he had his hands around the waist of number 58. Fortunately, that one comes back, so it's gonna be fourth and long. It was a great run by Padubny to sidestep that and get himself to the outside and gain up about 20 yards. Unfortunately, uh, it was a holding behind him, and like you said, now it's fourth and 11. I still don't think that we'll see a punt. As nope, they're no. going to line up, and they're going to go for this. So got to get 11 for the first down. Big play for the Blue Jays here. See what they can dial up. Double move. Alm looks to air it out. That throws it up high. and not able to connect with his receiver. As looked like he was trying to find number 15, Braylon Metzger. So that one sails through his hands. And that's going to be a turnover on down. Ball's going to go back to the T-Birds. Yeah, what, what a great play call for the Blue Jays to trust your line to, to give him plenty of time. And he, he basically, he had the time. He tried to double move. He faked the out quick out. The T-Birds didn't bite on it. And... They had to go to his second option there. A good, I think the T-Birds, again, when it's fourth and 11, you can set back and play a little bit less aggressive, and you can play in that zone and set back and uh, uh, see what happens and just uh, kind of play per coverage instead of uh, having the blitz there. Down in distance had a, a big contributing factor to what defense you were going to run. Parker's going to hand this one off. Sierra works off that right side. Running hard. I'd imagine with seven minutes left to go here in the third quarter, we're going to see a lot of work on the ground by the Thunderbirds. Yeah, I think so too. Not in any hurry to snap the ball. They're going to take full advantage of that play clock. Yeah, they do get they do a good job of getting up to the line of scrimmage. Like you said earlier in the broadcast, you said they don't huddle. They just get to the line of scrimmage and looked over the sidelines for the play call, either from the coach or from the backup quarterback signal in plays. I think uh, even uh, Coach Paldy sing flashed some signals every once in a while too, so trying to keep the other coaches from trying to pick up on their signals. Here's Parker up the middle. Not a one-yard game before he's forced back. Going to bring up third and short for the Thunderbirds. 
Dubney and uh, Mueller were there for the tackle. Nothing fancy on that no. play call, just putting it in Carson's hands, seeing if he can make something happen. And it's kind of worked for them all the second quarter. It, he was good for five, six yards doing a, kind of that same thing, either that or that little sweep here to the short side or the strong side of the field with those two pulling guards leading the way for him. Now Parker. He sends Burke out a little bit farther, but Coach Balti not liking something that he saw, so he's going to take a Metzger financial timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium, third and short for the Thunderbirds. As Carson Parker, not sure what he was waiting on. They're going to try to reset the play clock here, I think. Want to reset it, 25 seconds, there we go. Now he starts. Yeah. So now we're, now we're ready to go. Parker's going to drop back. He's going to pass it long, looking for Quatman. Oh, Just off, off of Quatman's hands as he was able to get behind Boggs. Couldn't quite ring that one in. We've seen him come up with some pretty good catches tonight. We sure have. We'd like to have that one back, that one right off his fingertips as he got the beat. I, I thought they were going to go out to Bork out here on the right side, but they kind of rolled coverage to him and now got Quatman open and just off his fingertips. I guarantee he's going to look at that one tomorrow and wishes he could have caught that. So the St. John defense holds up, forces LCC into a punt. This one's on its way. Fair catch called. We're going to have a oh, penalty yeah. as Braylon Metzger took a hit. And just a mental mistake that time yeah. is Milan Cowan did not see the fair catch signal and went for the tackle. So St. John's going to get a few extra yards here as they come out for their next possession. And Cowan knew right away that he he messed up right when he hit him. And he's coming over like, ah, oh, my bad, coach. That's just – he didn't even really hit him that hard. He's like kind of like tried to tackle him, just kind of hit him like, oh, I'm not supposed to do that. And then – Kind of sat on the turf thinking, oh, darn it, why did I do that? He's an athletic guy that's kind of maybe uh, wants to make some plays for his team. Can't fault the effort. And just a sophomore, but Coach Palti, he gets plenty of playing time on, the, on this team. And, you know, one of the things that we see year in and year out from LCC is speed and Milan Cowan's going to be a, a, another one where, as we see him move through the rest of his high school uh, uh, career through junior and senior, I think we'll see him picking up a lot of plays for the T-Birds. Yep. First down, handoff, trying to find a little bit of room, but Swinnon gets stopped, not able to get anything going. And, excuse me, that was actually Podubny. And he's going to be stopped after a gain of one. Yeah, that's been tough sledding for up the – you know, up that middle. If the, the front four of the T-Birds have done a great job controlling that line of scrimmage. And we said in the pregame how both coaches, both coaches in, when we talked to them this week said you needed to control the line of scrimmage. And, you know, I, I think it was a battle royal the first quarter. Both teams were kind of going back and forth. But second and third quarter has been all LCC. Four receivers that time. Uh, ball was completed, and Nathan Ditto, nice pass and catch there. And St. John's going to pick up a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Yeah, sure was. Great little, you know, and I, I, I do like this play call, this little slants. I think you can take advantage of LCC's aggressiveness and just kind of cut across her face as long as you get coverage because they, they've been kind of going uh, man coverage all this, daring them to, daring them to throw the football. Going to do it one more uh -oh. time on the out, but that one hung in the air a little yes. bit too long. Quatman saw it the whole way, read it, jumped the route, and that's a pick six. Another turnover for LCC, and this one goes all the way back for six. Yeah, and that's that's the that's why you place man coverage, right? You jump jump the routes, and you can read it because you know you got safety deep. You got Parker back. You're going to jump if it takes a long time. I don't know if that got tipped maybe a little bit because it kind of came out a little bit different. But Quatman jumped that route, got himself all the way in the end zone. And when he sees green in front of him, he's gone. Matthew Quatman with his third touchdown of the night. One rushing, one receiving, and one on the defensive end as LCC now on top, 40-7. to seven. He's having himself a game. 
Michael Tafflinger out for the extra point. Kick is up. And it is good for another eyesight of Lima and Delphus extra point. LCC on top, 41-7. to 419 left to go in the third quarter. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is, I'm sorry, tonight's first down sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Wapak and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where home style happens here. Pick six by Michael Quatman pushes this to a 41 to seven uh, Thunderbird lead as they get ready for the kickoff. And they're kind of yelling up here at the press box to get the clock started. Got a few officials running their hand, got coaches. Uh, it's now a 34 point game. So by Ohio High School Athletic Association uh, rules, as soon as their officials, uh, it only stops on change of possessions and touchdowns. This one is away. St. John's is going to bring it out. As Braylon Metzger is able to get it out. Right just shy of the 25-yard line, and that's where Delta St. John's will come back to work. As we saw the pass game get going a little bit there, that last sure possession. Did. They had some good looks. Even on the play that was picked, you know, that was a good route. That's a dangerous pass, though. Right. They're thrown to the far side of the field. and yeah. It was a, more of a timing route that time. His Mike, Michael Quatman just made an excellent defensive play on it. Sure did. That, it, that's probably a 40 to 50 yard pass, passing it from one side of the field to the other in five, 10 yards of, of the field. It's, you know, that's been a lot of pick sixes in high school, college, and professional football. Here's on with the handoff. Padubny going to work off to the right side. And Matthew Quatman, who else in there for the shoestring tackle? Now Matthew Quatman has been sick much of this week. Talking to some of the coaching staff, weren't quite sure what to expect out of him. Maybe only one-way football tonight when they're used to seeing him go both ways. Not quite sure where the energy level would be, but obviously none of that holding him back tonight as he's had a game. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, he... <laughs> He's been pretty special tonight. 2.45 left to go here in the third quarter. Alm back waiting for the snap. Time is going to hand it off to Schwinnin. Excuse me, that's Padubny one more time. Padubny gets running. He makes himself so small. You know, yeah. he, he looks a lot like Swinnin coming out of there. He does a nice job moving in small spaces, but not a whole lot there. It's going to be... Third and five for the Blue Jays. Trying to trying to get something to happen, but we've said it several times, it's been very, very difficult to run between the tackles tonight. A lot of credit goes to those defensive linemen and those linebackers. Oh, another, another fumble. fumble. That's Picked winning. Up. And the officials called it, it said Ooh. he was down. That's good for the T-Birds because Schwinnin, like it was Johnny on the spot. That ball just jumped right up in his hands and Sear comes can. out of there like kind of shaking his arm. I wonder if he got a stinger because he was a heck of a hit. Somebody put a heck of a hit on. Yeah, that def it was hard to see from up sure. here. But you just saw the ball go flying. It looked like Schwinnin was still up, but the officials come in, blow it dead. and A bad break for St. John's that time as it looked like uh, that one was going to be picked up and ran for a long game by the Blue Jays. This one gets knocked down as you see Alm try to get rid of it, but his arm was hit. It's going to fall down for an incompletion and bring up fourth down. McKee, Johnny McKee, Johnny coming from his defensive line position to get there and get his big paw on the quarterback to knock that one away. He couldn't complete it to the receiver. But it might have been a good thing because I seen Quatman lurking back there, just reading the eyes of the quarterback, just baiting him, I think, to make a pass because he was just ready to jump in front and tried him to get himself another pick six. And actually, I had uh, marked down the wrong down. It wasn't fourth, or it wasn't third down going on fourth. That was fourth down. So with that incompletion, LCC is going to take over on downs. Yeah. One minute left to go here in the third quarter. Let's see if we get some more uh, players in that probably haven't got in much. It's number 30 runs in late. And off to Sarah. Uh -oh. Sarah right up the middle. 
Nice stiff arm to get a couple of more, and as that's going to be a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. And as he takes the ball down into the Pats Donuts and Cream red zone. Just running hard. He's making one cut, boom. It's a great job still by the line, them line guys up front. Opening up them holes. First and 10 from the 17 yard line. 15 seconds left to go here in the quarter. Parker gonna take the snap, hand it off to Sierra one more time. He works off that right side. Oh, fights wow. through some tackles, another stiff arm as oh. he just continues to fight and fight and fight. And he is forced out of bounds at the one yard line. Wow. I don't know why they stopped the clock. It should still be running. I think, I think it even may have gotten announced as a touchdown, but I oh. never saw any signal from yeah, the officials. Yeah, they moved it back to the three, so I guess it is a touchdown. But I never, yeah, I never saw the official comes in. He marks it down yeah. as, as the one, but because I they thought did he went sideways, he never put his hands up in the air. I didn't see it. Did you? I did not. But that was a touchdown. So yes. another Leland Smith touchdown for LCC brings it to forty-seven to seven as Tafflinger comes out, kick is up. And it is good for another eyesight of Lima and Delphus extra point. LCC puts another one on the board behind the running of Sierra as they go on top, 48 to seven. Three seconds left to go in the third quarter. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's timeouts are brought to you by Metcare Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Call 419-225-6067 or visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Taking a look at the upcoming schedule on WOSN this weekend, Saturday at 10.30 a.m., Delphus Jefferson from or versus Antwerp. Saturday night at 7, Van Wert versus Perkins. And Saturday night at 9.30 on WOSN, Pandora Gilbo versus McComb. Sunday, 5 p.m., Ottawa Glendorf versus Woodmore for girls' soccer. For boys' soccer, Ottoville, Ottawa Hills at 6.30 on Sunday. And at 8 p.m., New Bremen versus Fort Loramie. Volleyball tournament time all around the state. Very exciting. You saw on there the Macomb-Pandora-Gilboa game. The winner of this game, which is looking like LCC, will take on the winner of that Macomb-Pandora game next weekend. So should be another excellent matchup. I would agree. As had a little bit of a clock adjustment during that last play. I think there was some confusion well, with I, the touchdown and yeah. so maybe some time left in the third quarter. Yeah. But we have actually clicked over to the fourth now as this kickoff is off, going to be fielded and brought up just past the 30 as Podubny's trying to get in a few extra yardage and is taken down at the 35-yard line. <laughs> Eleven thirty left to go in the game. Let's see if uh, we get any. No, it's still first team defense out here. Looks like, and looks like the first team offense for the uh, Blue Jays. Quatman and trying to get set out here. Here goes Ohm, drops back, trying to air it out. Looked like he wanted to go deep. Not able to find anybody, but drops it off short to Metzger as he's forced out of bounds. Yes, Lauk, Jacob Lauk is leading his case. He goes, I got held. <laughs> the fish will come up and tapped him and said, sorry, son. He's still looks looking like at him. Still not happy. It looks like he has an argument there as we take a look at the Charles yeah. River instant replay. 10.40 left to go. St. John's with the ball, second and one. Alm, flushed out to his right. Just lost it out of bounds. Looked yeah. like for a second there he had an opening, but yeah, I thought quickly maybe. the LCC defense got over there. Yeah, and I thought maybe he's going to run that one and get himself first down or at least uh, try to attempt it. But nonetheless, he throws it away. Good decision, I guess, and live to 
go another down. Third and short for the Blue Jays. Alm, um, two in the backfield, two receivers. They take a look at the sideline to get the play call. Gonna hand this one off to Podubny. He works up the middle, and he's gonna pick up Ali's famous recipe chicken first down. So off to the 48-yard line. Good hard running by Podubny. See some substitutions in and out for the Thunderbirds. Alm drops back. You can tell he still wants to try to go long. Yeah. Wasn't quite there. Nice job that time as he had tucked that one away in his left hand, saw a receiver come open. So nice move to grab that one back out, get that throw off, but can't complete it. Yeah, great elusiveness there by Alm to get away from that because he was almost going to have about a 10-yard loss there, but he eludes the tackle and uh, tried to make something positive happen, but just through the hands of Metzger. New extra, looks like some JV players are getting in. Dubney with a middle, or a run up the middle. He's gonna be stopped just short of midfield. Gonna bring up third and seven for the Blue Jays. I tell you, D'Angelo Russell and Gianni McKee have uh, really, really controlled that line of scrimmage up the middle, and there's been tough sledding for the Blue Jays up that middle, because those two young men have been uh, putting in the work tonight. Here's all, I'm gonna air it out one more time. Can't find who he wants. Oh, wide open receiver on that far side is Nathan Ditto. He's able to shake his defender, pick up another least famous recipe chicken first down. Kind of a nice little drive here and Alms, uh, you know, trying to use his athleticism, dancing around and Eluding the rush and escaping outside. Puts a nice pass right on uh, Ditto. And Ditto sidestep a guy and gets an extra five yards. Handoff this time. Working across that defense. Swinton able to pick up about four on the carry. That's a lot of kids are uh, getting subbed in and out. Great job by the... Uh, LCC coaching staff to get some of these uh, younger guys in and uh, making sure his starters don't get hurt for next week. And they practice just as hard as the starting five, and it's good to see that they get in and, and try to see if they can make a play. But heck of a throw there by Alm to Ditto down. Ditto's uh, him and Alm are kind of connected here in this last five minutes. As you see... Ditto able to get down inside the Pats, Donuts, and Cream red zone and set Delphi St. John's up with an opportunity here to put another score on the yeah. board. Great job of Ditto going right down the seam there when it was three wide. And Delphi St. John's pounds it in as Podubny is going to put another score on the board, his second rushing touchdown of the night. Make the score 48-13 pending the extra point. Good aggressive job by the uh, drive by the Blue Jays as Podubny's no quitting him as he's like a, a hammer there and knocked heads and he just uh, stepped right through and got in there. Good aggressive num running by Podubny. Metzger waits on the extra point try. Kick is up and it is good for another eyesight of Lima and Delphi's extra point. That makes the score 48-14, 6.37 left to go in the fourth quarter. We'll be back on WOSN. Tonight's extra points are sponsored by the Eyesight of Lima and Delphus. Dr. Underbrink at the Eyesight of Lima and Delphus provides quality, comprehensive eye care to Lima, Delphus, and surrounding areas. Visit the eyesightoflima.com for more information. We mentioned it before, no quit in these Blue Jays as they are continuing to play hard. And we saw Podubny that time able to put one in as Clay ran real hard between the tackles, went right up the middle, and got his second rushing touchdown of the night. Kickoff's going to go out of bounds, or excuse me, out of the back of the end zone. So touchback for the Thunderbirds. They'll come out and we'll see if they 
make any offensive changes here with 626 left to go in the game looks like uh, I did see the uh, look like the JV team huddling around their uh, coach there and some guys taking some snaps and look a lot of, a lot of these guys are new guys getting in here and that's good to see that again some action for the JV guys or the second team guys uh, getting them some playoff state playoff action and that is exactly who was in and at quarterback Braden Dayhill as we are going to have a St. John's timeout so the Blue Jays want to take a Metzger financial timeout we'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN Welcome back. Tonight's Instant Replay is sponsored by Charles River and Spencerville. The premier pharmaceutical and chemical research facility in Northwest Ohio is hiring. Visit jobs.criver.com to apply today. So Dayhill takes a snap. He's going to hand it off. Good hard running. Right off that right side and is number 20, Max Hardesty with the carry. There's a bunch of different players in for the Blue Jays as well. Good job by both coaches to get these guys some playoff uh, experience. See Hardesty on a Charles River replay, pick up a Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken first down. Hardesty, a 6'2", 225-pound freshman. Looking every bit the part of a varsity <laughs> running back there. <laughs> yeah. Running hard. Dayhill. Hands it off one more time. Here's Hardesty working on that left side, trying to push the pile. Keeps going, keeps going, keeps going. Nice hard run that time as he was able to pick up about seven on the carry. The line change here. You got six guys coming in. Trying to get everybody in some action. Just over four and a half minutes left. So, and LCC is in no hurry to snap the football. Dale waiting on the play clock to start to turn down. Five seconds left to go. Takes the snap. Hands it off one more time to Hardesty. He's going to work up that middle. As he ends up about a yard short of the first down. Third and short. Third and one, four minutes left to go. LCC will move on to play in the regional semifinals next weekend. We try to take a peek at the scores going into the fourth quarter. Macomb and Pandora is close. Uh, Macomb up just one score right now at 26-21. Anyone's game still. So LCC may not know until a little bit later tonight who they're facing, but either one of those teams are going to provide a good matchup for these Thunderbirds who, you know, when you look at their record, 7-4, and four, it doesn't really tell the story of the success that they've had when they have been on and when this offense has been firing all cylinders. As we saw tonight in that second quarter, they are almost unstoppable. Right. If they mix in the pass, complete a couple passes, and, you know, obviously they've shown that they can run with their quarterback and their running backs is all they got to do is soften up that defense a little bit with that pass, and then uh, it, they're just, they just caught fire, and uh, they kept scoring, kept scoring, kept scoring. It was, it was very difficult for that defense to uh, figure out what they were trying to do. Under three minutes left to go, Dayhill, he's going to take the snap, going to keep it himself this time. He's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage, so no gain on the play. You want to think a uh, legal shift? Yep, legal shift. And the penalty will push them back five yards, so it'll be first and 15. As we see Hardesty come back into the game. He was briefly spelled by Demetrius Stallworth. hurry for the T-Birds to get snap the ball. They're doing a pretty good job of the JV team to get under five seconds. We better get this one going here. Two, one. 
Just got this yes. one off. Hardesty off that right side. Good, strong run by the freshman. So he got the penalty yardage back and a little bit more that time. So going to bring up second and nine for the T-Birds. Yeah. So about time for maybe uh, two more plays, I bet. That'll be about it. Especially they're doing a good job of taking that play clock down to Make sure you Less stay. One. Make sure you stay tuned. At the end of the game, we will have our Stolly Hustle Award winner. Also, try to get a word with the winning coach Scott Palti. Uh, lots to talk about is with his team and the way that this offense responded in the second quarter, and how proud he's got to be of that defense holding strong early on. Yep. Hardesty again. Good job by number 74, Jackson Hurston. 6-1 freshman to get in there and make a tackle. This one might be, as we approach under a minute here. Uh, they ain't gonna snap the ball for another 20 seconds, so this will definitely be the last snap probably of the game. As a lot of the uh, T-Birds are lining up here for the handshake after the game. Here's Dayhill calling his own number one last time, and that should just about do it. LCC is going to walk away victorious, take nothing away from the Blue Jays as they've had an up and down season, but finished strong at the end, made it all the way to the regional quarterfinals, but that LCC offense is too much in the second quarter. Yeah, absolutely, I agree with you. So we will step aside and we will be back to wrap this up. Stay tuned, we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back to Spartan Stadium. We're we'll rejoined by Coach Palti. And Coach, congratulations, a big victory tonight. Defense really established themselves in that first quarter. Kind of offense off to a little bit slow start, but talk about that second quarter and how much that meant for the team. Yeah, like you said, offensively, we really struggled coming out of the gate. You got to give our defensive guys a ton of credit. We did a really great job on defense in the first half. Um, second quarter, we were able to hit a couple big plays. Uh, we were able to stop them, you know, get a three and out, make them punt into the wind. And we had a lot of short fields in the second quarter and took advantage of them. And it just kind of snowballed from there. And we were up 27-0 um, at halftime. Then we had the wind coming out the second half. So really, uh, you know, weather played a big part in this. We took advantage of it. And I give our kids a ton of credit. They played great, great football, really played hard and great and controlled the line of scrimmage and really proud of them. You know, a lot of great players tonight, a lot of good big performances, but Matthew Quatman mm -hmm. came up big for you guys, had to come in um, on that first touchdown when Carson Parker had to take a seat rushing touchdown. Then he catches the touchdown pass. Then he has the big six, did it all over the field. How big was he tonight? Oh, what a great game for a sophomore in the second round of the playoffs. You know, just showed up tonight and, you know, like you said, caught the ball, ran the ball, made a great read on their out route on defense and picked it off for a pick six. And, you no. Know, just a really good player, and he's gained a lot of confidence as years going on, and he's been a great target for us and a real weapon, and uh, hopefully continues for us uh, in the next in the next week. Story of the postseason, survive in advance, moving on. You know, uh, next week's opponent still maybe a little up in the air, but looking ahead, looking forward, what has the team got to work on to keep moving through? Yeah, there's 16 teams left at this point. Everybody's going to be pretty good, and um, you know, we talked about here in the huddle. We, we got to come out from the get go. You know, we got to be ready to play on offense. We can't have three and outs to start the game. We got to get our momentum established early and uh, got to play good football. And I thought we did a really good job of taking care of the football. Turnovers were not a problem for us. And, uh, you know, keep, keep having good special teams. Don't turn the ball over. And it gives us a great chance to win. All right. Congratulations right, again, you. Coach. Appreciate we appreciate it. your time. Coach is going to go join his team, going to be joined again by Scott Mag. And we're going to take a look at tonight's Stolly Insurance Hustle Award winner. Check out our highlights at tonight's Stolly Hustle Award winner on the WOSN YouTube page. And Scott, this one was pretty easy. About yeah. midway through the third quarter uh, during a break, we looked at each other and said, it, it's going to be Matthew Quatman. We right. talked about it with Coach Palti. He was just doing it all over the field tonight. Right. You know, when, if you score on offense, you score on defense. You know, you run it in, you catch a touchdown. I mean, you put three touchdowns in. Uh, uh, what a heck of a game. And Coach Palti touched on it. He's a sophomore. He's coming. He's just improving every week. It's it's amazing uh, what effort that he did tonight. He, he was just phenomenal. He was obviously one of the better players, if not the best player on the field tonight. He had a heck of a game. So big performance by Matthew Quatman. Congratulations to him. He's our Stolly Hustle Award winner tonight. And that just about going to do it here from Spartan Stadium. But Scott, before we go, you know, 
it's hard to kind of put into words sometimes what you can see out of this LCC offense. We talk about Carson Par uh, Parker a lot. We talked about Matthew Quadman, what he did tonight. But Gabe Sierra, he's an unsung hero on this offense by a lot of people from the outside looking in. They can get you beat in a lot of different ways by a lot of different guys. We saw Billy Burke come up with a couple of big catches tonight as well. And then defensively, you know, we saw the, the big stands. We saw the interceptions, two turnovers tonight by that defense. You know, when these guys are on, it's, it's hard to see teams you know, beating them when they're playing their A game. Absolutely. They got, they got, you know, you're going to set Aaron, you're going to take away the run because they can't run it with Sierra and, and Parker. And then they got the guys on the outside that's going to beat you. They got the 6 5 receiver and they got the, the Quatman. And, you know, you can't take away both things. And then defensively, they got the big guys up front that controlled the line of scrimmage, I thought, tonight. And then they just allows those linebackers, you know, they play a 3-4 and those big guys up front eat, eat up the offensive linemen and allow them linebackers to come in and make plays. It's 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 scary, you know. It a lot of good things that happens when you you're unpredictable because you can do so many different things and you can take so much things away. Who knows? This team could have a long run in store for them. All right, that's just gonna about do it here from Spartan Stadium. I'd like to thank our crew, everybody in the truck, everybody on the field, behind the cameras, back in the studio. You guys do a great job. We appreciate everything that you guys do. One final time from Spartan Stadium. LCC knocks off Delphi St. John's and moves on 48 to 14. Have a great night, everybody.